We are very excited and grateful to have Mari Al Jamal with us today. Mari Al Jamal is the son of Shadliya Sufi guide Sidi Muhammad Al Jamal, and and he is an Abdullah, a servant of Allah who seeks to share his understanding of the way of Islam and the way of the Sufi with all hearts who yearn to feel and experience the love of God. His teaching today is Stories of My Father, Sidi Muhammad Al Jamal, and Teachings of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mari, welcome and thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Sidi Abdullah. And I thank uh, everyone that is with us, inshallah, will be able to deliver to you what Rabbil Alameen have uh, chosen for us today. Uh, and uh, so we can give you the most. I'm going to go right to it. And I'm going to start with our, uh, the mawlid of our uh, Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We'll talk briefly uh, about that. And we'll, then we'll jump to the other uh, subjects that we're going to talk about. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidi al-Mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salamu ala alihi wa sahbihi al-Tayyibin al-Tahirin. When we uh, start to talk about Rasulullah, I'm going to do the Arabic and the English as I'm accustomed to, insha'Allah. إذا تحدثنا عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه صلى الله عليه وسلم if we were to start about talking about our Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم يذكر في الإقامة ويذكر في الصلاة ويذكر كل يوم وفي كل أرض we when we do our إقامة in our in, in our أذان in our إقامة uh, in every place and on every piece of this land the seen and the unseen from from the planets, the awalim, uh, when Allah Ta'ala said Sab'a samawatin wa sab'a aradin, seven heavens and seven aradin, we know only of this one, but we know that there is more. So we know that Rasulullah's name, Salawatullah Alayhi, is mentioned in what we know of this earth and the others. Wa fi kulli alam, wa yudkaru fil adhan, as we just meant in the, in the adhan, kulli mawdi'a. Hadhan nabiyu alladhi hinama sa'da ila as-sama. This Prophet, when he made his night journey, Laylatul Isra'i wal Mi'raj, which you know of, وَوَقَفَ مَعَهُ جِبْرِيلِ When him and Jibreel, the angel Jibreel alayhi salam, they have stood, they have uh, uh, stood at the gates to heaven. رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ويقول, he stops and says, Jibreel says, رسول uh, الله said to Jibreel, I'm so sorry, رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, he says to Jibreel, أهنا يترك الخليل خليله يا جبريل. Is it here, O Jibril, that the the companion or the friend or the beloved leaves his beloved, O Jibril? Jibril عليه السلام says, يا عز علي فراقك يا رسول الله. It's so hard for me to part away from you, O رسول الله. ولكن لكل منا مقاما معلوما. To each and every one of us. Have a station that they cannot go farther. فأنا, he says, Jibreel is saying that. فأنا إذا تقدمت خطوة احترقت بأنوار الجلال. If I was to move one step forward, that's Jibreel saying, I would be burned in the nur, in the many anwars of the nur of the jalal. أما أنت يا ابن عبد الله, but you, the son of Abdullah, because uh, you know who he is, Rasulullah Muhammad ibn Abdullah, the son of Abdullah, his father was called Abdullah. Amma anta ya ibn Abdullah, thou taqaddamta lakhtart, lakhtarakta anwar al-jamal. If you were to move forward, O Prophet, you will uh, break through the, the anwar, the, the lights of beauty. وَيَتَقَدَّمُ الْحَبِيبُ الْمُصْطَفَى صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ And Rasulullah then they part away and Rasulullah صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ يَتَقَدَّمُ He moves forward وَيَقِفُ فِي الْحَضْرَةِ الْإِلَهِيَّةِ And he stands with Allah تعالى with the Creator تعالى الله الملك الحق And here إن شاء الله وهناك تكون قمة الجمال And in that, in that time the mountains the, the, the uh, peak of the mountains of the beauty حيث يقرأ يقرأ رسول الله الأعظم السلام على على جناب الحضرة الإلهية when Rasulullah صلوات الله عليه محمد says 
many of you, in fact, may, most of you know this one. When Rasulullah looks at the face of our Creator, Allah Ta'ala, when we say, we're talking about Allah Al Wahid Al Ahad Al Fard Al Samad. He says, Atahiyatu Lillahi was Salawatu wa Tayyibat. Rasulullah, when he sees the face of our Creator, Rabbil Alameen, he said, Atahiyatu. All, when we say, when we say that, Atahiyat means that all the love, all the respect, all the goodness, all the kindness, all the justice, all of the good things that Allah Ta'ala have given to you and I, all of those in, in, in a form of salutations, like in, in givings, bowing to Allah, and all of the good prayers, and everything that you know that is good, everything, what tayyibat. Allah Ta'ala, then the answer from Allah, Allah Ta'ala, Yujib, Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi, wa rahmatullahi wa barakat, peace be upon you, O you Prophet, and Allah's mercy, and all of his barakat. Then Rasulullah Al-Azam says, Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salihin, peace be upon us, and to all of those Ibad, which inshallah, all of you, he included you in his salutes, even then, way back then. This is what, and this is, then he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. This is what we call in Islam, in our deen, at tashahud, at tashahud, which you do say every single time you sit down on your in your uh, in your uh, sujood in your ruku in your sujood in your salah and the beauty of that subhanallah al azim we go back to you when you do your salah not only you repeat that every single two rukas you do even in your nawafil which is what you do in the night when you wake up for Rabbil Alameen, for the love of Allah, you do your ruk'at, or in the five prayers. Uh, you only, you also do, you also do, just that comes to me now, you also do dhikrun samit, tazkurullaha samitan, which means you do a dhikr in silence, besides your salah. You are drawing, you are writing the name of Allah. Many of you know that. I'm just saying that for the ones that don't know, inshallah. So as you stand, you're writing the alif for Allah, the alif. As you do, uh, you bow, you do the lamb. As you stand again, you do what called lamb alif. And then you, as you complete sujood, bowing, you do the ha. So you are rewriting Allah's name with your movement. Walillahi um, alham. As he uh, and from here, from here, from that we're talking about salam. Rasulullah, this is one of the main keys in your hand to your own Jannah. He said to us about the salam. And نقرأ السلام ونطعم الطعام ونصلي بالليل والناس نيام ندخل الجنة بأمان. Allah, the Rasulullah decided to give you the key for Jannah in a very simple way. By you having that, أقرأ السلام wherever you may be in this dunya, wherever you may be in this dunya, and you pass anyone. Raise your hand in peace. Say salamun alaykum. Give everyone peace. Give everyone peace. That's iqra'u salam. Assalamu alaykum. You are. Assalamu alaykum. What does it mean? It means I am giving you assurance that no harm will ever come from me towards you. I'm assuring you I only have love for you. This is salam. This is exactly what is the Muslim is. 
This is Iqra was salam. Akhri is salam. Wat'im it ta'am. It'im it ta'am. Feed the hungry. Feed the hungry. At'im it ta'am. Akhri is salam. Wat'im it ta'am. Wasalli bil layli wa nasu niyam. When everyone is asleep and enjoying the comfort of their bed, get up. Get up to the one that loves you the most. The ones that gives you that unconditional love. The one that sends you all of these love letters from the moment you're born till you're back with them. Two rukas for the love of Allah will open the doors of Jannah for you. After that, we go back and continue. وَيَسْأَلُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ الْأَعْظَمُ رَبَّهُ he, Rasulullah asks Allah as he's sitting in his hadra, Ya Rabb, O oh Allah, in kunta takhazta Ibrahim khalilak, if you were have to take your Ibrahim al-Khalil, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam as a khalil, as uh, somebody who's very dear to you, way better than a friend, you can't say a friend, wa Musa kalimak, and Musa alayhi salam kalimak is the one that you have spoken with. Remember, when Musa Kalimullah, Kalimullah told Allah Ta'ala, Arini ara, give me the ability to be able to see you. And, and he said to him, Lan tarani, and then you, you know the story. Um, uh, when Allah Tajalla, he, he, told, he told Musa, look at the mountain, O Musa, and, and if you if that if you can see that mountain, then you can you can see me. And when Allah Tajalla on the mountain, the mountain become flat. Musa Saika and then Musa bowed completely out of humbleness. Allah Ta'ala Tayyip. So we go back and we say, if you were to take Ibrahim as your Khalil, which is your your companion, your your closer you made him close to you. Musa Kalimak, the one that you speak to, you spoke with. And Wa'isa alayhi salam alayhi from your own ruh. And then uh, وَأَعْطَيْتَ سُلَيْمَانَ مُلْكًا كَبِيرًا And you give Sulaiman uh, عليه السلام, Sayyidina Sulaiman عليه السلام, Mulk, and you give him a great kingdom. وَرَفَعْتَ إِدْرِيسَ مَقَامًا عَلِيًّا And you, wrote, you raised our Prophet Idris عليه السلام. He was a tailor in Egypt. Uh, he was a very good tailor and he did tasbih. And uh, كان إدريس قد, uh, صديقا, uh, uh, well, he, he was a very truthful one. He was a very honest one. He was a very dear one. And he, when he used to thread the clothing in his, as he was tailoring, he would put the needle and would say, Tasabih, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wa La Ilaha illallah, Wa Allahu Akbar. This was the station of Idris. Warafata Idris Maqam al in the in the fourth heaven. Aliyan. Fa'ayna ana min haula. Rasulullah said, where am I from all of those? Where am I? What do what do I if, if you give them all that? And he said that in the hum, being very humble, being very humble, and and he is the master of all humanity. Our Creator answers Rasulullah. In a place that doesn't any that doesn't have anyone in it, a close of kings that Allah has brought close to him or any other wali or any other prophet only him and Rasulullah فقط يقول رب العالمين يقول الله رسول الله تعالى he says to Rasulullah يا رسول الله يا محمد oh you messenger of Allah oh Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام إذا إن كنت أخذت إن كنت اتخذت إبراهيم خليلي if I was to take, if, I, if I've taken Ibrahim as a dear one to me, فأنت حبيب, and you, but you're the one I love. والحبيب أكرم علي من الخليل, and the, the Habib, which is the one, the one I love, is way closer to me than just a friend. وإن كنت تخذت موسى كليمي, if I was to take Musa as someone or I've spoke with, فقد كلمته من وراء حجاب, I spoke with him from behind the veil. But you are, oh my Habib, oh my love, you are sitting on the carpet of my own is when I cannot live without you. And I cannot, I cannot bear life without you. That's why you become my anise. 
you become my anise. That's the ons, is the highest stations of love. وَإِن كُنْتُ تَخَذْتُ عِيسَى مِنْ رُوحِي And if I was, have, if I've taken Isa from my own ruh, فَقَدْ قَرَنْتُ اسْمَكَ بِسْمِ يَا حَبِيبِي So I have made your name, I made it a twin of mine, a twin of mine. It never ever leaves me. It never ever, whenever anyone says, فَلَا يَقُولُ أَحَدٌ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ No one says in the whole dunya, from all the believers, no one says, لا إله إلا الله without saying محمد رسول الله وإن كنت أعطيت and if I was to uh, if I have given سليمان ملكا عظيما فقد أعطيتك السب if I was to give it, have سليمان a huge and a big kingdom I have given you السبع المثاني السبع المثاني the seven مثاني is سورة الفاتحة سورة الفاتحة uh, have seven ayahs because the Bismillah is considered an ayah and Sab'u al-Mathani means the, the, the verses that's full of thank. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is a thank you. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen is a thank you. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is full of thana and thana is shukur is, is thana is, is being very thankful and I've given you that he said to him. The Allah Ta'ala says says to Rasulullah Muhammad. And then Allah Ta'ala says, فَوْعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي يَا حَبِيبِي He's, he's, Allah Ta'ala swears in his izza from Aziz, one of the 99 qualities, and Jalal from the 99 qualities. Oh my Habib, oh my love, مَا قَرَأَهَا أَحَدٌ No one reads the Fatiha. مَا قَرَأَهَا أَحَدٌ مِنْ أُمَّتِكْ Nobody from your Ummah will read the Fatiha believing in the Fatiha. And what it says, من أم from your أم إلا غفرت له ذنوبه ولو كانت مثل زبد البحر I would forgive all of his or her sins or bad deeds even if they were as much as the foam that's on the faces of all of the oceans وعدد حبات الرمل and and even if they had sins as many as the tiny bits of grain in the whole دنيا والحصى and the little pebbles so الحمد لله رب العالمين وَإِن كُنْتُ رَفَعْتُ وَإِن كُنْتُ رَفَعْتُ إِدْرِيسًا مَقَامًا عَلِيًّا And if I was, if I was, have risen Idris, the Prophet Idris عليه السلام, a very high station, فهو في السماء الرابعة. He's in the fourth heaven. أَمَّا أَنْتَ يَا حَبِيبِي فَفِي مَكَانٍ فَفِي مَكَانٍ لَمْ وَلَنْ يَصِذَ إِلَيْهِ أَحَدٌ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَلَا بَعْدٍ If I was to put Idris in the first heaven alayhi salam, but you are, O oh my love, are in a place that no one entered before you and no one will enter after you. مِنْ قَبْلِكَ Sayyid al-Khalq, here we end with saying, Sayyid al-Khalq, the master of all humanity, we لَا نَحْتَفِذُ بِهِ يَوْمًا وَاحِدًا فِي الْعَامِ بَلْ نَحْتَفِذُ فِيهِ طُولَ الْعُمْرِ We don't celebrate him one day or one month or one year. We celebrate him all of our time in this dunya, inshaAllah. And we teach, we teach our sons and daughters and the ones we care for to do just that. To celebrate him. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Um, we will go in, so we start with our sister shared with us what's been uh, taught, what's been the, the teachings that have been uh, shared by our uh, wonderful brothers and sisters regarding what we're living in nowadays in this dunya. In our in the place we live in here in Europe in in the, in the Arab world about the inequality and injustice towards other people. So I would like to say a few words in, about that, and inshallah we'll uh, share with you some stories about uh, Rahmatullah Alayhi Sidi Muhammad Rahmatullah Alayhi, your father, your teacher, your guide, and my father and my guide and my teacher. And inshallah we we'll start here. إذا رجعنا إلى الأصل فينا. If we were to try to go back to the root in you and I, فينا to the root in you and I. وهو روحنا. And that is 
our spirit. وهذه الروح بارئها واحد. This ruh in you and I and in everyone else in the dunya. Bari'uha wahid, the creator for all of these arwah, which arwah is many ruhs, is one. Wa muhibbuha wahid, and the one that loves these arwah is one. Wa huwa al-ad, he is a just one. Wa huwa latif, and he is a gentle one. Wa arwahuna jami'an. All of our arwah tuqirru bil'ubudiyyah tuqirru bil'ubudiyyah meaning mafturatun ala al'ubudiyyah wal-mahabba means the fitra fitratu al-iman wa mamini let's go and try to explain that the best we can a fitra is something that you and I have no say so in it which is actually most of the things if not all but that is when Allah Ta'ala, when Allah Ta'ala, I was sharing that with my brother Abdullah briefly before we started, uh, spoke to all of the arwah and he said, Alastu bi rabbikum, and I love your Lord. They all said, Qalu bala, qalu bala. That's iqrarun bil ubudiyya. Admitting that yes, you are our Lord, all of us, all of us. And then you go back again, also we go to Iblis, Asa was takbara when he was ordered to bow to Adam. What we're trying to get to here is uh, is the one that denies or refuses to accept others as his brothers and sisters or her brothers and sisters and to be, to completely consider them equal would be doing what Iblis alayhi salam have, uh, Iblis, uh, Iblis well, we could say alayhi salam if he was to remain an angel, but no, he no, he's no longer an angel. Iblis, when he disobeyed the order of Allah by bowing to Adam, he said, خَلَقْتَهُ خَلَقْتَهُ مِنْ طين. You created him out of mud and you created me out of fire. The fire is stronger. But the little he knew, he knew the thing is when, when you and I put the seed in the dirt, it becomes a tree and we all benefit, all benefit. When you throw it in the fire, it vanishes. So at the cupboard, thinking that you are better, uh, the English word is what, what do you call that? The cupboard. The cupboard is when you think you're bigger and stronger and better and you're worth more and you deserve more than the others. That's called the cupboard and that's, that's called Iblisiya to Iblisiya to uh, in an Iblisiya way to live, if you will. Astaghfirullah Azeem. So, عندما ندرك قول الله تبارك وتعالى When we understand the words of Allah. يا أيها الناس Addressing all of us. إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى We have created you from male and female. وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا We have created you from different tribes and different languages and different countries. For one reason and one reason only. لتعارفوا so you get to know and get close to each other and to, to, to live with each other and to understand each other and to share this dunya with each other. The very ones, the, the ones that's full of karam. Akramakum means uh, the generous ones of you that, uh, uh, and the closer one to me. Atqaqum. Atqaqum, taqwa when we talk about this station, which is where, inshallah, we'll do many lessons, uh, teachings, and we will abdraw, uh, all of these qualities will address. Maqamat is called. And taqwa is a maqam. Uh, taqwa is understanding anna Allah haqq. Understanding anna Allah haqq, which is that Allah is truth, is truth. And that's the very, very top. وأيضا قول تعالى قول قول الله تعالى قوله تعالى كلكم لآدم وآدم من تراب you all belong to Adam and Adam is from there ونحن كلنا من طينة هذه الأرض we are all all every single one of us is from the mud of this the dirt the mud of this earth this planet كوننا مخلوقون من من طين فيجب ألا نتكبر 
because we are made from this mud that we're standing on, we can never think that we are bigger. Allah Ta'ala said, no matter how big you may think you are, you will never be able to dig and see what's under my ground way deep, and you will never be able to reach my heavens. Uh, don't ever forget your root. عندما تتواضع تستطيع أن تعيش فوق هذه الأرض. When you humble yourself down, then you can be you'll be able to live above this earth. فوق الأرض. فوق الأرض. Above this earth. لأنها أمك because she is your mother. تحضن أعمالك في الدنيا وتحضن أعمالك في البرزخ. This this earth. تحضن أعمالك. She takes all of your deeds in the dunya. And she's the, also the one that will take all of them and hug them in the afterlife, after you pass, after you're no longer in the dunya, in the, in the barzakh life, which you all know. Because this ground, this earth we, we're walking on is one of the main witnesses on you and I, Yawmuddin. So... There is few things that will bear witness, will be witnesses on you and I, Yawmuddin, and Al-Ard, the land, the earth, is one of the witnesses. Al-Makan, the place, Al-Ladi Tumathil, Al-Ard, which is one. This is Al-Ard. And the second witness, was zaman Al-Ladi Yumathil, Al-Layn, Al-Nahar, is the time, Al-Ladi Yumathil, Al-Layn, Al-Nahar, the one that is represented by the daytime and the nighttime. والجوارح الجوارح is your eyes, your hands, your heart, your feet, your, your ears, your these are the جوارح. They are the witness. واللسان. Uh, another one that will be, will be witnesses is الملكان. The angels that are sitting on your right and your left. رقيب عتيد. رقيب عتيد is their names. And in here, let me say a little something. These two angels, these two angels, Somebody does something beautiful. They raise their hands and they make a dua to Allah. And they say to Allah, Allahumma frihu kama afrahana. Allahumma afrihu kama afrahana. They raise their hands and say, Ya Rabb, Allah, make him happy like he made us happy. Like he made us happy. So that other person does something no good. They keep the one on the right the angel on the right keeps slowing down and delaying the one on the left before he writes the bad deed till he or she, if they are blessed by remembering to say, Astaghfirullah Rabbal Alameen, it will not be reported, recorded in his book or her book. But if he or she decided to go to sleep without saying Astaghfirullah Rabbal Alameen, both of these angels will raise their hands to Allah and they would make a dua, and they would say in their dua, Allahumma ahzinhu kama ahzanana. May Allah make him or her sad like they made us sad. They don't want to report you. They don't want you to be doing bad. They want you to give you the longest chance before they report or record your bad deeds. So we move on. Uh, these two angels are witnesses. Wa Rasulullah. عليه الصلاة والسلام is another witness. He says, تعرض علي أعمالكم كل ليلة. I look at your deeds each and every night. فإن رأيت خيرا فحمدت الله. If I saw good deeds, I thank Allah. وإن رأيت شرا دعيت لكم. I raise my hands and make dua for you. May Allah forgive them. May Allah forgive them. Look at the love from Rasulullah to you and I. And then the other witness, Thumma Allah, Wallahu Khayru Shahideen. Allah Ta'ala is another witness, and Allah is the best of all witnesses. So, we, Nahnu Khudikna Ka'abauna, we were created like our ancestors. And the, the, the very first one is Adam. So we can build on this earth for the good 
of humanity. Allah Azza wa Jal, كل الخطاب القرآني. Every, every, every time Allah addressed us in the Holy Quran. He addressed us all. Every single one. It's not for uh, the better ones, the poorer ones, or the higher ones in states. It's for absolutely everyone. And when we, when we read it, or when we hear the Holy Quran, we should always believe in our hearts that Inna Allah yukhatibuk. Allah Ta'ala is speaking to you, specifically to you, to you. And, and this is Subhanallah al Azim. Allahu Akbar. This is the, one of the main, the equality in Allah's justice here. Uh, we go and we say, and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi I remember hadith. He said, An nasu sawasiyatun ka asnani al -mishd. The human beings are just as equal like the blades on a comb. On a comb, sawasiyatun. No one is better than the other one. No one. In akramakum and Allahi atqakum. We mentioned that. يعني النعيم كل النعيم هو الاقتراب من سب من الله سبحانه وتعالى. All the naim, the naim is the gifts, the endless gifts in your dunya for you is only when you get closer to Allah. والعذاب كل العذاب من وجد حجابا بينه وبين ربه من أوجد حجابا يعني the pain and the suffering for the ones that created a wall between them and their Allah their Lord لا تحجب نفسك في الدنيا كذا تحجب في الآخرة do not build walls between you and Allah so you will never have a wall when you are standing in front of رب العالمين يوم الدين رسولنا الأعظم محمد صلى الله عليه وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين. We have sent you all to all the human beings, all of them, with all of their colors and all of their shapes and all of their languages and all of their countries. What he did is when he to 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 make to to completely eliminate racism. I'm going to call it open racism. What he did. For the very first Mu'addin, the one that called for the prayer for the very first time was Bilal. Bilal used to be at the time of slavery, uh, a black man from Habasha. Habasha is, uh, is it uh, Sudan or Ethiopia? Now we call it Ethiopia. He was, he was freed. He was bought from his owners, uh, from the, Kef from the Mushrikeen. And, and he was put as the very first Mu'addin. He, Rasulullah, had him climb on the Kaaba. And he used to say, when he used to do the Iqama, Bilal, alayhi salam, when he used to do Iqama for the Salah, Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi Muhammad, used to say to Bilal, Arihna biha ya Bilal. Give us peace in it, O Bilal. Yani, this is the sweetness. And there is a story that but we don't much have much time for that. When, when Rasulullah passed away, Bilal refused to call the Adan. And there is a very touching story then. But we will move forward to say even Rasulullah wanted to eliminate that racism by marrying also uh, one of the uh, companions wife when he passed away in, in 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 war he married his wife and she also was from the from uh, the habasha she also was a black woman after khadija passed away he married her and and her name was sauda uh, sauda bintu zam'a and he married her also to show that alhamdulillah rabbil alameen la nufarriq we don't separate uh, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen um Istikbar, istikbar mean thinking that we're better than other. The door, the doors of Jannah written upon all of them, every single one. لا يدخلها أهل الكبر. The people of Kibr, as we said, the, muta the first mutakabbir is Iblis. And it says that with the, the people of Kibr will never be able to enter Jannah. 
Um, insha'Allah, when we stand between the hands of Allah, we remember this. If we have missed some of our ibadah, some of our, uh, what Allah asks from you and I, we will answer Rabbil Alameen, Ya Rabb, O oh Allah, I did not disobey you out of kibir, of thinking I'm bigger than your ibadah. Uh, I only disobeyed you out of laziness, out of stupidity, out of silliness. I didn't mean, I didn't think that I'm bigger than your ibadah, your worship, Ya Allah. And remember to say to Rabbil Alameen, inshallah, because we never know when, we have, when whoever leaves the dunya, his qiyam have started. Uh, so these things take them to heart, please. And you tell Rabbil Alameen, Ya Rabb, I have in that heart of mine, I have only love for you. I have only love for you. Ajnihatul Hurriya lil insan al aqil huwa an la yakhaf illa Allah. The wings to freedom to each sane person in this dunya, he or she, that they should have no fear of anyone in this dunya, but from Allah Ta'ala. And this is where, this is Tawheed for you. This is Tawheed, that you are only, should fear the only one that you should. Out of love though, because you do not want to if you have someone in your life so dear to you, so close to you, you don't do anything that will upset him to make him sad. You do not. You do not. Um, I'm going to move, inshallah, to some stories that I have witnessed with your father, Sidi Muhammad, rahmatullahi alayhi. But before that, I'm going to speak shortly about a wonderful promise that many of the awliya made to their guides. And Sidi Muhammad was close to a wali that made it to his guide. And then he made that same promise to his guide. And I'm telling you, I'm going to share this one with you because this would be your promise to your guide, Sidi Muhammad, Rahmatullah Ali. He says to him, to his guide, that even though I can't see you, or I can't get to you, I promise you, you never leave my memory for a second. Because what have gathered you and I together is our uh, love to Allah. Our love to Allah. He said, "Anta la taghibu an khatiri lahza ida sadaq al wood." If the wood, if the love between you and I have been truthful. Carried the pain and the suffering of myself and you being far, far away from each other. Waya Shaykhi and O oh my Shaykh, Alladi Tahababna Fihi, Nahnu Alladi Tahababna Fihi. The thing that you and I have, Tahababna, means fell in love with each other. Who Allah, who Allah, we both fell in love with Allah together. والحب في الله لا تؤثر فيه الأزمنة. And love in the way of Allah does that the times that the, the, the time does not does not uh, interfere with it. والأزمنة والأماكن and even the places even though the distances between you and I are so far away that means nothing. الحب من يقرب البعيد ويسهل الصعب. That kind of love is the type of love that will make the far close. الحب من يقرب البعيد 
ويسهل الصعب and makes the hard easy ويؤلف بين القلوب ويؤلف بين القلوب يؤلف بوت ألفة ألفة is again for the ones that read that ألفة is again a very high station of love when the two hearts cannot be parted from each other that's ألفة والحمد لله رب العالمين now we will share with you inshallah some stories and we'll start with a story that we shared with our brother Abdullah briefly uh, for the ones from you that have visited the holy land and uh, have visited the resting place for uh, Sidi Muhammad Ahmadullah Ali I have uh, pointed some uh, graves around which is my mother's which he, he wanted to be by her feet. So he, Sidi Muhammad lies right uh, at the feet of, of my mom next to him. And then on his, uh, uh, next to him is his neighbors. Uh, one of the, the most beautiful uh, person that we met when we were way young is this black man from Nigeria. His name was Omar in Nigeria. And I pointed it to some of you when we met there, when we went there together. And this man have spent his life, he left Nigeria uh, and he spent 20 years in Medina serving, serving over there for the love of Allah, for the face of Allah, cleaning uh, the, the mosque or around the mosque and, and 20 years in Mecca doing the very same thing. And then the rest of his life came and stayed in Jerusalem. And he lived in the very, in the Zawiyah at the end of his time. And he was very, 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 very close to Sidi Muhammad. And he was one of the awliya as well. Um, and, and he got really sick. And um, he spent the last few years in the Zawiyah. Sidi Muhammad used to send us with food from my, my mom cooks to go take it to him. And we only can tell you today that what sticks with me is how his beautiful scent, he always like he was perfumed. He always smelled like beautiful incense. He was a big tall man uh, and a smiley one, always smiling. He was always full of uh, joy. And uh, uh, Sidi Muhammad used to shave him and he used to bathe him and he used to take care of him and clip his fingernails and, and his toenails. and. And they used to do little dhikrs together as he was lying in his bed. Uh, see the Omar in Nigeria, Rahmatullahi Alayh. Um, and he lies now next to Sidi Muhammad, him with amazingly all of our neighbors, Sidi Muhammad's neighbors in the dunya that were close to him, is right next to him in his rest. Every single one that's around to him was his close one to him. Walillahi alhamd. Now, the thing about Sidi Omar in Nigeria is the, and this is something for you, for your hearts, for your arwah. Sidi Omar in Nigeria was laying in our zawiya. The day that he left the dunya, people that left to do their hajj came. They didn't know he's in Sidi Muhammad's zawiya. Sidi Muhammad is taking care of him. They all said, we have met Haji Omar doing tawaf around the Kaaba. And he was. And he was. But he also was in Sidi Muhammad's Zawiya. Sidi Muhammad was doing dhikr with him. And Sidi Muhammad said, yeah, yeah, he is. He is in Mecca. He is in Mecca. He didn't tell him he's in the, in the Zawiya, laying right there. He did not. Because Sidi Omar was also doing his tawaf. Because his heart was there. He have served Allah Ta'ala. We'll give you whatever your ruh needs or wants or wishes. You are dear to us. Allah Ta'ala says you're dear to us. Rahman al-Rahim. Rahman al-Rahim. Abdi. Abdi. If you found if you find me, you have find you have found absolutely everything. Absolutely everything. And Sidi Omar, Hajj Omar, found Allah. He found Allah. So he found everything. So he could be anywhere. Like Sidi Muhammad used to say to you to me, Anal Ghaibul Habir. I am the 
absent and I am the present, the present as well. And from now we move to Sidi Muhammad, I'll share with you this. I only knew Sidi Muhammad very, 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 very good when I was in an orphanage learning and teaching as well. Uh, I used to hear people always saying, oh, when Sidi Muhammad, you're the son of Sidi Muhammad, yes, oh, mashallah, alhamdulillah, and they raise their hands and they made dua for him. I cannot even tell you how many times, may Allah bless your father, thanks to your father, alhamdulillah to your father, mashallah, your father. I could not even count. I knew then and only then that Sidi Muhammad was not for us as a family alone. He was barely for us as a family alone, but he was everyone else's family. He was their father, all, all, all of them all of the people that I, that I know, I don't know. And then after Allah Ta'ala took him to his, to with him, jasadan, not ruhan, uh, body, but not soul, يعني. we knew even more, we discovered even more. And that 27 years that he came, I'll start with the very first time Sidi Muhammad landed in this country. I, I was already here six years and he came 27 years or maybe 28 by now with my brother uh, a brother of mine I picked him up and I come to my little tiny studio apartment under someone's house and Sidi Muhammad is having a rest and then there comes the night time about 10 ish and the phone rings and it was from the kingdom from the palace's king in Jordan he used to be then an employee for the kingdom of Jordan and uh, they said to him uh, you, there is an order from the king that you left to America without his permission. You have to come back or you will lose your job. Who did you get your order from? I said, oh, I got my order from Allah. I don't need the job. And the job was for 40 some years, he was absolutely everything. He was the head of the courthouses. He was the awqaf leader. He was the imam and the khatib in the Aqsa mosque. He was the one that is responsible for inheritance and, and salaries for the guards and the graveyards for the Muslims. I mean, he was doing so much, so much, so much. He left all of that in an idling. I got an order from Allah. I don't need your job. And he could have had whatever he wanted. He could have had anything he wanted, anything, not only from the from Jordanian government, he could have had it from the Israeli government, he could have had it from the, the Egyptian government, he could have, you, you name it, he could have done it, he refused all that and decided to come to you here because the order came for him to come and to take care of people here. When he said to his sheikh, see that I cannot speak English, he said the one that taught you to speak Arabic will teach you to speak English also. So Allah Alhamdu decided to come here and he fell in love with you all and he wanted you, he used to address you as his children when he speaks about my children, my children. He would talk to you about you, my children. He was very proud, very proud that he had you, you as his children. Wallahi Alhamd. Seven, what, 27 years of traveling back and forth with Sidi Muhammad we used to always stay in the United Kingdom for very dear, beautiful, beautiful brothers and sisters home. But I share with you some of the sweetest times, the, the, the most wonderful trips you'd have with Sidi Muhammad. And I'll start with a very funny one. We were on a British Airways flight going back from San Francisco to the United Kingdom and then back home. And Sidi Muhammad, was always, always, walillahi alhamd, Allah gifted him, made people love him, because if Allah loves you, he makes his ibad love you. Uh, and he was so much loved. We will have an economy ticket, and we will almost, all, almost every time, get upgraded to business class. And we got upgraded to business class. So we're sitting in business class, and they bring us the food. And that was when, for those of you who knew Sidi Muhammad closely, that was before he lost his teeth. So they bring us a, a tray, and each tray had, in one of the plates, had two or three olives. And for the ones that know of you, know Sidi Muhammad also very closely, then he had big fat hands and big fat fingers. And uh, he decided to put one of his fingers 
upon one olive and stab it with the fork. And he did so. But that olive decided to fly above and land into our neighbor's tray. So the, the city Muhammad looks at him in such a sweet looking face with a beautiful smile. And the other guy does the very same, gives him a smile also. And what does Sidi Muhammad tell him? He tells him, you can have it. <laughs> and the other guy looks, Alhamdulillah, he, he took it. He took it. And that was one little something that we've witnessed with Sidi Muhammad. It was the sweetest thing. Um, also, walillahi um, in traveling so much with Sidi Muhammad, Sidi Muhammad had each and every evening, he would stay with us six months here out of the year, which you know, sometimes five, sometimes seven, but most of the time they were between five and six months. And I would take him to an in evening drive. He loved his evening drives. And for the ones of you that know this place that I live in, it's called Marin County and it does have beautiful mountains and beautiful uh, beaches. And we used to have an evening drive and most of the time we we'll reach a mountain called Mount Tam around Maghrib time. And he will do his Maghrib there. And it was a wonderful, wonderful sunset. He would always choose to do Maghrib there if he's gonna do. And we'll have a beautiful time. And we got to talk about endless things. And he would open up with poetry. He was, he is one of the most wonderful poets that I've ever here because he could say poetry on the spot and will completely make you travel to a world that a dunya that isn't this dunya in 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 the love of god in 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 describing allah's beauty in in poems that he wrote to my mother in things that he mashallah would completely make you travel to to another beautiful dunya but um, the things that he would talk about the day before he, he had his uh, final awake moment. The day before he had the final awake moment on this dunya. We were driving down from Mount Tam. And then he decides to tell me, he started to, all of a sudden starts to talk to me um remember your mom's grave your uncle your uncle have decided to put a fake grave for him by her feet which is the truth one of my mom happens to have, she have raised my one of my aunts and two uncles and that was her condition for marrying my father when he came to ask for her, her, her hand in marriage so that if you want to marry me I would like to, you have to accept my sister to move in with us and my two brothers, the young ones. And he did. So they, to, to make it short, uh, this uncle that made the fake, fake grave by my mother's feet, he really, really wanted to be buried by her feet, at her feet. And, and um, he asked his kids, okay, build a fake grave right there. And that would be when I pass, I want to be by my sister's feet, at my first sister's feet. So... Sidi Muhammad tells me, listen, you tell your brother Ahmad that that grave is mine and nobody's but mine. And that was the day before he went to sleep, Sidi Muhammad. And when Allah alhamd, he talked to me about a lot of other things that uh, some of them maybe I can share with you later, but not quite now. Um, and it was what we call in, in our, in Arabic or in, in our way, they call it khitaba muwadda, a speech or a talk for someone who's saying goodbye, who's saying goodbye, goodbye, salamun alaikum. So I felt that very much, very, very much. I felt sad for myself, very, very sad for myself but I also felt happy for him because he was, of what he said to me, of the other things he said to me, then I knew he's someone who have lived in love with his creator and served his creator 
and never owned but in his whole life. Two, three shishas and two turbans and two capes and one cane and a pair of shoes. That's all he had. That's all he wanted from this dunya. And to go forward in the story a little bit. Uh, when he, when Allah called him home and uh, one of his very best friends and companions in the way is a wonderful Imam, his name is Abdul Karim al Afagani. Sidi Muhammad, we prayed three times Janazah prayer on him. One here in, in America, some, some of you attended it. And the morning of his arrival, the Fajr time to the Holy Land, and the main one where it had thousands in the Holy Aqsa Mosque on the Jum'ah day. So two in the Jum'ah day, uh, uh, one was uh, after Fajr, and that was read by his best companion and friend in the way. That was his Sidi, Sidi uh, Allahumma Salla ala Muhammad Abdul Karim. And we did Janazah prayer there. So Sidi Abdul Karim asked of us, me and my brothers, can I please be with my brother for a moment alone? So he said, of course. So he goes in with Sidi Muhammad in the room and he talks to him. And then he asks us to go and to say, to look at your fathers and you have to be to believe it and to imagine it only if you witness it but i'll try to deliver that to you we look at Sidi muhammad's face and we see a beautiful face that is the most wonderful beautiful smile that you could ever see completely in acceptance completely in happiness completely in joy and he says to us Sidi Abdul Karim says, Sidi Muhammad was a muhib. He reached a station of a muhib. A muhib is one who have lived and in this dunya in love with Allah. And Lawlaka ya wihdatal wujudi. He loved what wihdatul wujudi is. He loved seeing Allah in everything, in absolutely everyone. I would have never been able to exist without you, O Wihdatul Wujud. Wallahu huwa Wihdatul Wujud. So Sidi Muhammad fell in love with Allah. Fell in love with it. He lived as a muhib and he died. He left this dunya. There's no such thing as dying. Uh, he left this dunya as a muhib also. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Inshallah, I have managed to give you some to, uh, I hope I didn't make you uh, a little sad here, but uh, I'm just sharing with you what your guide, some of his legacy that you have witnessed, and inshallah, you will always be living in a beautiful place with his roof business. I know that he will always be with you, come and visit you, and you can definitely free your ruh to communicate with his ruh. That's what I would share with you. Well, thank you very much. So thank you, Sidi Abdullah, for giving me the chance to share this with my brothers and sisters. Wassalamu alaikum, walhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.